Hi, it's Friday and I'm posting another video. So here it goes. Before I go ahead and start, I wanted to show some of the things that I do with this program. I use Sketchbook for illustration work that I do. I use it, it looks, um, the finish looks very much like traditional painting. It looks pretty much like a gouache painting. So, so these are some of the things that I do that get printed in a magazine. This is something that's more promotional. But uh, I do that in Sketchbook. And I know that here, you know, on YouTube, I'm showing basically these uh, um, really quick paintings that I do, these uh, portraits. Uh, most of them don't take more than about four hours to do. I like this one took four hours and I distill it into 15 minutes with the speed this is going. But I just wanted to show that because I, I do a lot more than what I just show here. And maybe so, at some point if I can make a video that, that uh, shows more of a, a challenge as far as uh, putting together a composition like the, the those uh, paintings that I showed in the beginning, that may be something for the future. I'm just throwing it out there that maybe if, uh, if you're interested... Uh, leave a comment. I'll, I'll consider it. It, uh, it of course takes a bit more. So I'm I'm uh, starting a painting here, and I wanted to talk about starting a painting. And really, doesn't matter what medium you use. Doesn't matter if you're using traditional or digital. I'm approaching it the same way. And I've talked about it before um, in a lot of my other bi videos about how. You, how important it is to build up on a foundation that you build the structure of your painting. And, you know, I've talked about, you can go through any of the videos that I had before, talking about going from the general to the specific, um, which is what I'm showing here. I'm just trying to get generalized shapes and really uh, find the placements of where things are. Because what I'm trying to do is... is uh, well, let me put it this way. A painting is really a, 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 a series of corrections. You put down, the first things that you put down are approximations. They are approximations of the drawing, uh, measurements, um, values, color, and so forth. Everything is, you're, you're, you're uh, approximating. I think the thing that I... I um, concentrate mostly on here is light, light and dark, and um, everything else is secondary to that in the beginning. Um, I think other artists take a different approach, or they're able to do, I, I've known artists who are able to, 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 to think about the, 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 the light and darkness of it, as a, you know, where the light falls, as well as the color. I'm pretty much doing, it's easier for me to take care of one thing generally. And even though I do add color, it's not very, very specific. Especially when I do the digital work because what I tend to do is work in layers. And when I work in layers, I, you know, I give a, a general color underneath. And if I need to change the color in any way, um, I'll add a little more coolness to it. I'll add a little more warmth to it. I'll add another layer and decrease the transparency of that layer. And for that, you know, that, that helps me through a lot. That helps me especially with um, uh, darkening or lightening areas or darkening areas and uh, fixing trans, uh, smoothing out transitions from one value to another from one color to another and it's not always that smooth and what I usually wind up doing is uh, when I'm finished doing whatever I do with that top layer I bring it down and I use tools like the smudge tool or something like that to um, to smooth out the transitions between the colors or the between the, the, the values so pretty much when I start the, the, the painting, and I'm well beyond the start at this point because this thing has moved so quickly, but it's still a very, very general painting. It's not very specific as far as the details, 
and um, and you know what? I, I think it's kind of cool that 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 the paint the the picture that I included in here that I'm working from, which is a photograph that I took myself, is is so small because you can recognize a person with very little detail. There's so much that you have, there's only so much that you have to see to, to be able to recognize someone. I had a teacher who described it about how you are able to see someone that you're very familiar with from far away, from way far away, and you can tell that that's that person, even though you don't see any of the details, even though you're not uh, so up close, you're, you're just barely getting a glimpse of the person from a block away, but you can tell who it is because you can tell um, it's just the way the light falls upon that person to reveal their personality. There's only so much detail you need. Okay, so I, I can remember that from um, going to watch baseball games, Little League baseball games. I can tell when I was a kid, which of my friends were on the field, and I wasn't next to them, they were a distance away, but I can tell by just, you know, just, uh, you, you only need so much information. So, if as a painter, you can generalize so much that you can see that that is a specific person, then you, you, you've done your job. And so you see in this small picture, what I have now, I'm not saying that this is a perfect painting, but you see in the small picture, what I have is is in and compared to the painting, I, I I believe I got that generalization that I can tell that this is my son Joshua, and I can I can tell who it is just by looking at the painting. Showed it to my wife. She said, "Yeah, yeah, that, that's Joshua," you know. So. Um, and I didn't get too much into the details at all, you know. So, again, when you go into the painting, everything is, is, is generally about approximations. Approximations, and as you go into the painting, then you can add the details later. I'm not worried about the likeness right at this moment. I'm worried about getting everything correct. I'm worried about the, the um, because likeness is going to be a consequence of getting everything right, of getting the shapes right, of getting the measurements right. Of So that's why the start is so important. The start really is what you're doing with the painting. If you saw what I did in the beginning of this video was I concentrated on the line drawing which is more like a, a, a map of where everything was going to go. A map of where the eyes were going to be placed, a map of where the ears are, and so forth. It's just you know, a very general line drawing. And then I went back in with massing in the shapes as far as where the shadows fall. And then you know, going from that very general and getting more and more specific when I get when I when I come to it. But the thing is that the right now, or right from the beginning, not worried about a likeness. Worried about getting the placement, getting the measurements. Uh, you know, placement of the features, getting the measurements of the features, getting the values. Where uh, you know, as I go on, then I'm thinking more about the color and so forth, and. Um, Right now, I'm right now stopping to make an assessment. Okay, I was stopping to see where I have to adjust, and that's a that's a thing. I, I mean, when I painted from the model, what would happen is when the model took a break, you get a chance to draw away from your painting, you know, and then when you come back, you instead of just hitting, you know, hitting the, the canvas right away, you look and you sit on your hands. And you look at the model and look at where you're at and you make an assessment of what you need to change and with the digital it's so good I can add that layer and I can think about it and I can write things down or, or you know make out a map of whatever changes I have to make like I got to bring 
the ear on on the model's left uh, I got to bring that down a bit to match the ear on the other side. I haven't done it yet, you know, but there's going to be more adjustments that are going to be made, but it's important to take the time to, to assess every time you take a break from your work and you come back to it, instead of just going right back to it, make an assessment of what you've done so far and consider what changes you have to make. And you know, uh, um, a lot of people say digital is so easy to do with that because you can make the change. But really, in just about any other medium, except maybe watercolor, and there's still ways that you can change a watercolor. You know, uh, you can you can make you can make a lot of changes. I, I kind of look at the, this in the same way as I will, will work on a gouache painting. Or will work on an oil painting. You can always paint on top of your mistakes. You can always uh, come back and make an assessment. Consider where you need to uh, make the corrections. And go ahead and, and make those corrections. You know, and what I do right now, I'm, I'm getting into a little bit more fine detail, which I like to hold back. I like to kind of walk, kind of sneak up on the details. Um, again, being very general and sneaking up on the details once I have everything down, once I've gotten all the important things down. And it's still, you know, um, going, going back and refining the shapes, refining, you know, where the edges, Losing some edges, um, sharpening some edges, uh, you know, and uh, that's pretty much it, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I like, um, I'm new to this newer version of Sketchbook. I didn't have the subscription version before. I had the, the regular version, uh, the regular retail version. The subscription version... It's something new to me, so they've added some new brushes, and I hadn't gone ahead and made any brushes of my own yet, only because I'm exploring uh, these new brushes that they have, and I haven't really, I, I found, like, I like this fan brush. I like some of these watercolor brushes. The, uh, my favorite brush is still there, and um, matter of fact, all the old brushes, which are great, are still there. Um, but they've added a lot of new brushes. Um, and they're, they're you know, I, I'm, I'm exploring those. I, I just hadn't taken note of which one I like a lot, really. Well, right now, I use the, um, the synthetic, uh, coarse brushes. And I also use that fan brush. I also use the web smudge smudge brush, which I like a lot. I, I haven't explored the pastel brushes. I like them in some of the other ones. Now, this is what I'm talking about. See how in the collar, in some areas around the shoulder of the um, the jacket, I've added this brownish, yellowish tinge. And how I did that was I um, I added the layer. I changed the transparency of the layer and I came back into it so that I added just enough of this brownish yellowish tint to, to change that blue to give it like a worn effect like, uh, because this jacket is obviously very very worn it's he's actually wearing my jacket and then of course I'm, I'm making changes I, I, I looked at um, made another assessment and I realized that the collar on the left side of the painting on the model's right side comes down lower more on his neck I had it on his cheek so every step of the way even towards the end you you, you make assessments of uh, of the painting and, and uh, here's the finished product I hope you enjoyed this I, I hope that this was useful to you uh, again if it is come back I'll be here every Friday with a new video. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.